In the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Christ is risen. The very first words of the gospel today say that no one has ever seen God. And the church fathers acknowledge that this is a very complex statement. It's almost a statement shrouded in mystery, if you will. I mean, I can spend the next hours discussing the discourse of the essences and energies of God, but that's, that's for a different time and place. The reality, of course, is believers have seen God in the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And Father Schneemann of Blessed Memory writes in one of his books, It is not possible for the witnesses of Christ, both his life on earth and his resurrected life, while you still walk the earth for 40 days, it is not possible for their proclamation of the truth of his resurrection to not be real. And he says that because, as we all know, those of us who are believers, for the next 2,000 years, generation after generation, after generation of teachers, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, believers, kept spreading the word, the good news, if you will, of Christ. Which begs the question this morning, my dear brothers and sisters, what does it mean for us? That's a really powerful question that must be answered. What is that knowledge? That the witness of the resurrected Christ that was passed down in all his teachings, in his holy word, the scriptures. What does that mean for us personally? For many people, especially in the world today. It's a lukewarm feeling of, wow, you know, I like Christmas, I like Easter, I like coming, I like to, to celebrate, you know. Uh, occasionally I can, I can, I can you know, make it to church. You know, I say my prayers at home. But the real question is to really know God, to see God, you have to know Him personally. You have to know Christ personally, the resurrected Christ. How do we do that? For starters, we do that by seeing in every person that God puts into our life the image and likeness of God. All of us were created in His image and His likeness. Agnostics and atheists would challenge that saying, so then what you're saying then, of course, is that murderers and rapists and thieves and robbers are all created in the image and likeness of God, and the answer is yes, that is true. But along with being created in the image and likeness of God, we're also created and given the gift of free will. Free will has what has got us into the situation we're in today with the pandemic. I hate to be controversial, but had Adam and Eve not disobeyed God in paradise, there would no be no coronavirus. We would all be living in paradise. Think about that. And it took our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the flesh, God Himself, to come, to perform miracles, to be crucified because He was rejected, to die, go into hell and defeat Satan, resurrect, to restore us to the original state of paradise. However, that's why, even though we're restored and the victory is ours, that's why we live in a fallen world. That's why we suffer. That's why we're tempted. That's why we must, must 
constantly be vigilant and trust in that resurrected Lord that is ours. So to know Jesus Christ means very simply, on a practical level, on a day-to-day -day level, it means we know in each person in our families, each person in our neighborhoods, each person in our workplaces, is the image and likeness of God. And how we treat them, and how we show them love, and compassion, and understanding, and forgiveness, and patience, goes a long way to say, yes, I do know my Lord and Savior. Christ is risen. Indeed, Indeed he is risen.